a sigma bond is formed between the two carbon atom in a molecule of ethene. Which diagram shows the orbital overlap that occurs to form this bond? First of all, in the structure of ethene, carbon-carbon double bond is present and examiner is asking about the sigma bond. In the sigma bond, there is head-to-head -head overlapping. So you can eliminate option D because there is sideways overlapping in option D. So you have to pick out from option A, B and C. So for this, if you will do the electronic configuration of carbon, you will get the answer very easily. So look at the electronic configuration of carbon. Carbon has six electron. In the first shell, one s two. This is 2s2 and 2p2 and this is the electronic configuration in ground state. In the excited state, electron jumps from 2s to 2py. This is the excited state. But we know that in the structure of ethene, each carbon atom is sp2 hybridized. It means 1s and 2p orbitals are used. So this s and 2px 2py orbitals were used in the sigma bond formation so this is 1s this is 2px and this is 2py these three atomic orbitals will combine with each other and form a hybrid sp2 there are three sp2 hybrid or orbitals and the whole process is for the first carbon for the second carbon, you will repeat this process and then you can see that each sp2 from each carbon will make a sigma bond with the second hybrid sp2 orbital of the second carbon. So, this is the first carbon sp2 hybrid orbital and this is the second sp2 hybrid orbital. So this would be the answer. So option C. Why option B is wrong? Because this is S orbital and this is P. Why option A is wrong? Both orbitals are S orbitals. In the ethene, the two carbon atom will make a sigma bond with the help of sp2 hybrid orbitals. Question number five, the table shows some properties of four substances. Which substance could be potassium iodide? Potassium iodide is ionic compound. And in ionic compound, high melting point. So option C or D. And in molten state, good conductor of electricity. So option C is the correct answer because high melting point and in molten form, ions are free positive ion and negative ion will be free so they can conduct electricity question number six x y and z are all gases that behave ideally and react according to the equation one mole of x react with two mole of y and it form two mole of z when three moles of x and three mole of y are placed inside a container with a volume of 1 dm cube. They react to form maximum amount of Z. The final temperature of the reaction is 120 and you have to convert this temperature into Kelvin. So first of all, find out the limiting reagent. Which one is the limiting reagent? X or Y? Uh, if you look at the equation, for the two moles of y, one mole of x is used. So if you have three moles of y, you will use 1.5 moles of x. For the complete reaction, it means 1.5 mole of x is in excess. And how much amount of z will form? because product is controlled by the limiting reactant. So y will control the z. There are, uh, if, if you see the ratio, molar ratio in the equation, two mole of Y produces two mole of Z. So if you have three mole of Y, it will produce three mole of Z. 
So after the reaction, after completing the reaction, there would be no y mole. And after completing the reaction, 3 mole of Z is formed and 1.5 mole of X would be present. So, number of moles is 4.5 volume. For the gases, you have to uh, measure the volume in meter cube. So here the volume is in 1 dm cube. You will divide 1 dm cube divided by 1000. So you will get the answer in uh, meter cube. So 0 0.001 meter cube. And you have a temperature 120. You will add 273 to convert into Kelvin. So temperature would be 393 Kelvin. So you have to find out the final pressure. Formula is PV is equal to nrt p is equal to nrt divided by v n is 4.5 r is the constant 8.31 temperature is 393 divided by volume is 0 0.001 so by doing the calculation 4.5 times 8.31 times 393 divided by 0 0.001 so 14696 this is the answer question number 7 which pair of substance are both simple molecule there are actually covalent compounds are of two types first one is the simple molecular structure and the second one is the giant covalent structure in the giant covalent structure there is no specific formula for example diamond you are unable to tell me the number of atoms in diamond for example graphite when i ask what is the uh, formula of graphite the answer is only carbon you are unable to count the number of carbon atoms in, in graphite or you are unable to count the number of silicon or oxygen atom in sand. So those structure which does not have a specific formula or those structure in which you cannot count the atoms are the giant covalent structure. Otherwise, other compounds in which, for example, H2O, this is simple molecular structure. There are two hydrogen, one oxygen. For example, glucose, C6H12O6, six carbon atom, 12 hydrogen atom, six oxygen atom. You can count the atoms. So if you are able to count the number of atoms, that structure is simple molecular structure. So which pair of a substance are both simple molecular structure? Uh, option A, C60 and graphene. C60 is simple molecular structure, but graphene is not. Graphene is a layer of graphite. One layer of a graphite is called graphene. In option B, C60, again, this is simple molecular structure. Number of atoms are countable, 60 atoms. And iodine, uh, what is the formula of iodine? I2. There are two atoms of iodine in one molecule. So option B is the right answer. Question number eight. A reaction pathway diagram is shown. This is actually a reversible reaction in which reactants convert into the product and product is again converting into the reactant. Which row is correct? Enthalpy change for the forward reaction. This is the forward reaction. So enthalpy change would be K. This is the enthalpy change for the forward reaction. So from option A and B. And uh, uh, activation energy for the reverse. This is the reverse reaction. And activation energy always start from the reactant. So in this case, this would be activation energy which is O, which is O. This is the activation energy. So answer would be B. This is your answer. Question number nine. X is either chlorine or an oxide of chlorine. X react with water under the suitable condition to form two acids, HCl and HClO3 in the molar ratio of HCl. What could be X? So you, uh, for this question, you have to write the chemical equation. Okay, first of all, if, if I pick this one, ClO2 plus 
water. In the question, uh, he is saying two acids will form HCl and HClO3. And the molar ratio is also given. 1 ratio 5, 1 mole of HCl and 5 moles of HClO3 will form. So it's mean there are total 6H, so 3 moles of water. And there are total 1 chlorine here and 5 chlorine here. 6 chlorines. So 6 ClO2. No, uh, now you can count the number of atoms on both sides. There are 6 chlorines on both sides. Oxygen, 6 twos are 12 and 3 here. 12 plus 3, 15. And here, 3 oxygen atom and 3 multiply by 5, 15. So, equation is balance. It means this is the right answer. So, ClO2 is your answer. Question number 10. Ethyl ethanoate undergoes the following reaction. Uh, this is basically hydrolysis of ester. So for this reaction, you will write Kc like this. C2H5OH and CH3CO2H divided by CH3 CO2 C2H5 and water. So by putting the value, uh, what you have to find out, uh, what is the concentration of ethyl ethanoate? This one, ethyl ethanoate. At equilibrium, the concentration of both ethanoic acid and ethanol were 0 0.42. You can see that there is the same molar ratio. So and Kc is also given. So by putting the value 0 0.27 is equal to 0 0.42. And this is the 0 0.42 mole per dm cube for each for ethanoic acid as well as for ethanol. So I can take this care. And this is unknown. But you can see that there is one ratio one. So I can uh, take this care of these two values. And uh, for the sake of simplicity, I can say this ester and this water, I can represent it by X and because there is a same molar ratio, so I can take the square. So actually I find out the value of X. So by taking the square root on both side, 0.27 is equal to 0.42 divided by X. So by taking the square root of by taking the square root of 0 0.27, the answer is 0 0.0.519 0 5 is equal to 0 0.42 divided by x. So x is equal to 0 0.42 divided by 0 0.52. 0 0.42 divided by 0 0.52. Answer is 0 0.81. This is your answer. Okay, question number 11. Question number 11 is which row is an example of heterogeneous catalyst? Heterogeneous catalyst means a reaction in which the phase of catalyst and the reactants are different. For example, if the reactants are in gaseous phase, and the catalyst is also in gaseous phase. So you will see that you will say that this catalyst is homogeneous catalyst because both have a same phase. But if in a reaction, reactants are in gaseous phase and catalyst are in liquid or solid phase, then both phases are different. You will say that this catalyst is heterogeneous catalyst. So for the esterification, your reactants are in liquid form and sulfuric acid is also liquid. So this is would be homogeneous catalyst. The contact process. In the contact process, sulfur dioxide plus oxygen, it gives sulfur trioxide. These all reactants are in gaseous phase. 
and divanadium pentaoxide is in solid phase so this is your answer